Hi and welcome to my free Java video course. My name is Markus Biel. In this episode, I'm going to talk about immutables in Java. The concept of immutability has always been very important across all programming languages. For a Java developer, however, immutable classes, or simply immutables, have become more important than ever with the release of Java 8. Among many other cool things, this version introduced the concept of functional programming as well as the new Java Time API. Immutable classes play a key role in both of these new features. Because of this, I've decided to provide you with a detailed look at immutables. In the next 15 minutes, I'll tell you exactly what an immutable is, its advantages and disadvantages, and how to create an immutable. I'll finish by giving you concrete advice on when to use immutables in your daily work. So let's start with the most important question. What is an immutable class? In short, an immutable class is a class whose instances cannot be modified. The information contained in each immutable object is provided when it is created and is frozen for its lifetime. Once an immutable object has been created, it is read-only forever fixed like a fossil. So if an object is immutable, how can we modify it? How can we change this unchangeable spaceship? How can we explore strange new worlds and boldly go where no man has gone before? As it turns out, we can't. As I've said, you cannot change an immutable. Instead, you can return a new object that does reflect the change. In this case, we'd return a new immutable spaceship object with a new destination value of outer space. So far, this seems useless. Why should you bother with immutables? What kind of advantages will they bring you? First of all, immutable classes greatly reduce the effort needed to implement a stable and fault-tolerant system. After object creation, immutables can be in only one state, which seems very confining at first, but it's actually extremely beneficial. Let's see why. Imagine we have to implement a bank's accounting software. As a result of the financial crisis, the bank doesn't want its customers to be in debt. In other words, there is a business rule that an account balance must never be negative. Such a rule is called an invariant. To implement this rule, we will add a validation method that gets called whenever the balance is changed. In case of an attempt to overdraw the account, an illegal argument exception will be thrown. As you probably can imagine, the bank wants us to implement a variety of functions for their clients. For example, withdraw, pay debt and transfer money. To enforce the rule that the accounts balance must never be negative, we have to call the validation method from all these methods. This seems like a lot of duplicated code. There must be a better way. Pause the video here and think of an alternative way to make sure that none of these methods would overdraw the account's balance. Okay, the truth is, I tricked you a bit. We don't actually need to validate the balance in each method. I said we need to validate the object whenever it is changing, but an immutable is not changing. Instead, we validate the balance once in the constructor, so that no invalid object can be constructed. Once validated, an immutable object will stay valid for its entire lifetime. Wow! This is really cool! Methods like withdraw, pay debt and transfer money will return a new object, which will again call the constructor and validate the new balance. But wait! It gets even better! An immutable remains consistent, even in the case of an exception. Let me give you an example. Imagine you go to the ATM to get some cash. You put in your bank card, you type in your PIN. The bank takes the money 
out of your account. But just before it gets into your hands, there is an issue with the ATM. The money has already been taken out of your bank account, but it isn't coming out of the machine. So now you can kiss your money goodbye. Unless the account has been implemented as an immutable. In this case, your balance will be in the same state that it was before the failure occurred. Let's see what this looks like in code. If we are trying to withdraw money from our immutable account class and an exception occurs, a new immutable account object will never be created and the original bank account object will stay unchanged and be saved. So as I've shown you, an immutable object can never get into an inconsistent state, even in the case of an exception. This stability comes at no cost, apart from the cost of the initial validation. It's based on the simple fact that an immutable cannot change after object creation. Okay, I hope you haven't fallen asleep yet. There's so much more that immutables have to offer, so let's go on. Since immutables don't change, they can be shared freely. Let's see what this means. In this example, two mutable account objects are sharing the same balance attribute. If the account object on the right changes the balance, this will also indirectly influence the account object on the left. If, however, the balance attribute is immutable. When the account object on the right tries to change the balance object, it will not change, but return a new object instead. So there will be a second balance object now. For the same reason, an immutable does not need a copy constructor when copying an object. If you don't understand what this means, or you'd like to learn more about cloning and copy constructors, check out my video Shallow with a Steep Copy. Immutables can even be shared freely when using a log-free algorithm in a multi-threaded environment, where multiple actions happen in parallel. Many see this as the key benefit of immutables. However, it is a very advanced subject, so I won't go into detail here, but we'll probably talk about it at a later stage. Finally, immutable objects are also a perfect option to use as map keys and set elements, since map keys and set elements must never change. If you want to know more about this, check out my episode about maps. Okay, these are the main advantages of immutables. Let's also look at the disadvantages. The biggest disadvantage of immutable classes is that their use may lead to performance problems. Let's see how. Immutables require a new object for every distinct state they represent. Therefore, the use of immutables often increases the number of objects created. Naturally, the more objects that are created, the more system resources will be used. However, this may not be a problem at all. There are many more influencing factors, as we will see later on. So now that I've shown you the value of an immutable class, how can we actually make one? To make a class immutable, we have to follow a few rules. First of all, we have to make all its attributes private and final. Let's illustrate this by looking at the immutable spaceship class I introduced you to before. We make the attributes private so that no reference can be accessed from outside. While private variables cannot be accessed from outside the class, they can still be reassigned. To prevent this, we also have to make all variables final. Setting all internal reference variables to final clearly communicates our intent to make an immutable class. Should someone try to reassign a reference variable, a compiler error will occur. Okay, second, we must not provide any methods that modify the object's state. This I've already briefly discussed at the beginning of this talk, but now we will look at it more closely. For any change that you want to apply to your immutable object, you have to provide a method that returns a new object. Attributes that do not change, like name in this case, can be copied from our current object. Attributes that do change, like destination in this case, have to be initialized with a new value instead. Let's go to the next rule. 
To further protect our class from being changed, we also have to prevent it from being extended. Extending a class would allow you to override its methods. This would allow you to directly change the unchangeable object. Let's look at a code example to better illustrate this. So here we have a Romulan spaceship extending our immutable spaceship. Its overridden explore galaxy method violates the rules of an immutable, as it directly changes the destination attribute. As Romulan spaceship extends immutable spaceship, we can create an instance of a Romulan spaceship and assign it to an immutable spaceship reference variable. Much later in the code, in a different class and method, we will call the explore galaxy method on our immutable spaceship instance, which, much to our concern, will internally change the spaceship instance, which we expected to be unchangeable. To prevent this, we just have to make our class final. A final class can't be extended, so it won't be possible to override any method either. And now, to the final rule. We have to ensure exclusive access to any mutable attributes. Here you can see a representation of our spaceship object. The attribute name is of type string, which is an immutable. As I've already shown you, you can freely share immutable attributes with other objects, as they cannot be changed. The destination object, in this case, we'll assume is mutable. Anyone who holds a reference to it can alter it. This will effectively alter our immutable object. In other words, it would not be immutable. So to protect our immutable object, we have to isolate the mutable destination attribute from the outside and prevent anyone from getting hold of it. To achieve this, we never obtain or return a direct reference to a destination object. Instead, we create a deep copy and work with that instead. As long as the mutable destination object is never directly shared, a change inside an external object will not have any effect on our immutable object. Okay, talk is cheap, show me the code. To ensure exclusive access to our mutable destination attribute, we have to check all public methods and constructors for any incoming or outgoing destination references. Let's do this now. The public constructor does not receive any destination reference. The destination object it creates is safe, as it cannot be accessed from outside. So the public constructor is good as it is. The public current destination method returns a reference to our internal destination object, so this must be fixed. Now, instead of returning the real reference, we create a deep copy of our destination object and return a reference to the copy instead. Finally, the public new destination method receives a destination reference and forwards this reference to our private constructor. Now the private constructor directly stores the mutable destination reference it receives. So by following the execution path, we found that it is directly stored in the private constructor. This must not be allowed. To stop it immediately, we store a reference to a deep copy of the external destination object. Okay, so I've shown you what an immutable is. I've told you about its advantages and disadvantages. And finally, I have demonstrated how to create an immutable class. There's just one last thing I would like to tell you. When should you actually use an immutable class in your code? The question of whether you should design a specific class as an immutable depends mainly on whether the performance of the overall system is sufficient or not. This again depends on the nature of the system and all aspects related to it. For example, what kind of specific problem are you trying to solve? On what kind of hardware is your program running? Is it a desktop or web application? It also depends on the internal structure of your code. For example, of how many packages, classes, and methods does your code consist of? As you can see, there is no simple answer to this very complex question. Each case must be looked at individually. As a general recommendation, however, 
I advise you to follow this approach. Focus on designing a system that uses immutables to the greatest possible extent. Facilitate their use by designing simple classes with few attributes and methods. Immutables may become a burden when they are too complex. Simplicity is key. In this endeavor, clean code and immutables are a well-matched pair, reinforcing each other. In the majority of cases, this approach will lead to a system that exceeds our requirements. If, however, testing reveals that you have not achieved satisfactory performance, relax the immutability rules gradually, as much as necessary, but as little as possible. And that's it for this episode. If you have any questions, leave me a comment below this video. And please remember to give me a thumbs up before you go. Thanks for watching and see you next time.